What is it about old worn out objects that we artists find so intriguing, so paintable? Old objects are no longer geometric. I believe all of us artists had a similar experience. Somewhere around the 10th grade, we took a course in geometry and we all came to the same conclusion. Geometry is boring. I think I'll transfer to a course in art. There are several different geometric shapes with one thing in common. They're all boring. Why are geometric shapes so visually boring? Because they're symmetrical, constant, self-contained, equal. Shapes that are irregular are called oblique shapes. Oblique shapes are unequal, irregular. They change and therefore are more visually entertaining. Oblique shapes vary. They get larger, smaller, thicker, thinner. We often describe oblique objects as having character. When we're faced with geometric shapes, how do we make them into oblique shapes? By overlapping, putting other objects in front of and behind. Overlapped shapes have visual interest Overlap shapes vary. Overlap shapes unify. Overlap shapes give the impression of the third dimension. Consider that man-made objects are filled with geometric shapes. By placing an object in front of or behind a geometric shape, it breaks up the consistency of the geometric shape. Sometimes nature helps us out. Sometimes we invent the solution. Look at the monotony of the equal spacing of the birds on the geometric pier. Here, the unequal overlapping of the birds is much more visually entertaining. However, the pier still suffers from the monotony of geometry. The inequality of the overlapped birds on the oblique shapes of the pier create visual entertainment. When we separate objects in a painting, they often appear to be on the same plane or space. By overlapping these objects, we push some back and bring some forward. They're integrated rather than individual. When faced with geometric shapes, it's our job as artists to invent ways to break up the symmetry and create oblique shapes. Try this exercise. Take a sketchbook out on your back porch and toward the bottom of the page, draw the objects you see that are closest to you. Don't worry about drawing details or perfection, just a simple impression of an object. Now draw the object just behind it. 
then the object behind that. The value of overlapping shapes can't be overstated. Look how wonderfully unified and three-dimensional your drawing becomes by overlapping shapes. Try this variation on the overlapping exercise. At the bottom of your page, draw a simple object you know well. Now draw another familiar object behind it. Continue until you reach the top of the page. Search for every way to create overlapping, oblique shapes in your painting. This little abandoned Texas roadhouse has a classic Western style, but it's nothing more than a series of geometric shapes. The three-quarter view helps a little, but not very much. Now instead of a rectangle, it's a parallelogram. Remember our lesson on building a theme in your painting? How many objects can you introduce to overlap and bring life to this old Western character? Here's another exercise. Paint a few figures on the page. See how they instantly appear to be walking down the street on the same plane. Now paint a head over the shoulder of one of the figures and fill in until it reaches the figure in front. Now another head and upper body or two. If you mess up, just keep painting heads until you get one right. Consider we seldom see objects in their entirety. In fact, we usually see just the opposite. Objects are partially blocked from view by other objects in the third dimension. Where they intersect, they appear to belong together. Ed Whitney said, sacrifice everything in your painting for unity. When we overlap, we weld objects together, giving them a relationship they become unified.